Welcome, soccer friend, to the magical world of soccer bedtime stories, where dreams and goals come together. I'm your host, Tomek, and I'm here to accompany you on a journey through the stories of some of the greatest players, games, and tournaments as you drift off to sleep. If this is your first time visiting our soccer dream world, and you enjoy the story, we welcome you to follow and subscribe to listen to all the stories in our library. If you are a returning soccer dreamer, we encourage you to review, comment, star, and like the stories you love most. Your feedback and ideas help us get better and help to expand our soccer dreaming community. Please reach out to us. It's as easy as a pass to a friend. You can just email us at soccerbedtimestories at gmail.com. Enjoy the story. Sleep well and dream big. Before we begin our story, friend, let's take a deep breath and imagine that we are all snuggled up in a cozy blanket, surrounded by warmth and comfort. Tonight's story is one that will transport us to a magical world where anything is possible. We'll meet heroes, no villains, travel to far-off lands, and experience incredible adventures together. So let's close our eyes, relax, and get ready to embark on an unforgettable journey that will fill our dreams with wonder and excitement. Once upon a soccer time when the fields were green and the fans were loud, there was a great match that captivated the land. All through the world, the TVs were turned to see two great nations compete in the semi-final of the Olympic Games in London, England. On the hollow pitch of the historic and grand Old Trafford, the tale of two nations unfolded as the U.S. and Canada collided. What would the fates have in store for us? The opening minutes were a tense affair as the U.S. women battled with Claire. Canada defended the lines with physicality and toughness abound, a true defensive spectacle to hold back the American attack. The 22nd minute, Canadian defense saw a move commence with skills so fine. Canada's hero, Christine Sinclair, received a pass from defender Nault. She spun in the box with a move so neat, and her shot flew past Hope Solo's reach. The crowd erupted with a deafening screech. The match's first goal, a moment unseen, Canada took the lead in a thrilling race. After that goal, Canada soared, attacking with newfound vigor the U.S. plate back. Could Canada beat their mighty foe? The second half started, and in just a few moments, the U.S. was attacking again. Morgan and Amy danced through the field, but repelled again by the Canadian defense. Then, turn of 15 minutes, a corner kick turned magical. Galliano, a soccer poet, and so much more, spoke of a corner kick goal. Every time the corner kick shakes the net, without intermediaries, the crowd celebrates the goal with an ovation, but doesn't quite believe it. Megan Rapinoe had struck the ball with such ferocity, strength, and confidence. It rotated much as the planets do around the sun. It spun and spun until unaided, It found its way into the Canadian goal. The game was top, having relinquished dominion of the game for the beginning of the second half. Canada valiantly fought for and won a corner kick in the 67th minute. Diana Matheson's effort discovered unstoppable Sinclair, who defied the U.S. defenders and unleashed a resolute header into the recesses of the goal. Her second goal of the match restored Canada's lead. Near with three minutes later, the U.S. retaliated. A sweeping pass from the left flank, orchestrated by Kelly O'Hara, located Rapineau on the right. Her audacious attempt from beyond the 18-yard box, K. 
kissed the far post and found solace within the neck, bestowing upon her a second Golasso and restoring the game at 2-2. In the wake of this resurgence, Canada swiftly earned yet another corner in the 73rd minute, entrusted to the care of Tank Ready. Once more, the aerial delivery found its way to Sinclair, who overcame the resistance of two defenders, unleashing a thunderous header found its mark at the far post, thus completing a glorious hat-trick and taking Canada ahead. The United States and Canada were now embroiled in the golden thread of the face. These ancient Greeks, Clotho, Lachesis, Atropos, could not let this game go untouched. The United States were granted a corner kick, and it was Rapineau who stood poised to deliver. With a precise swing of her foot, the bull soared through the air, climbing its way to the far reaches of the box. The Cloyd, the Canadian goalkeeper, leaped into action, plucking the ball from the sky with a commanding presence. But this moment, that one moment which goes unnoticed most games, was abruptly shattered by the referee's whistle. Christina Peterson made a rear call, accusing McLeod of holding the ball for longer than the allotted six seconds. The spow, awarded against Canada, left the side perplexed. No warning had been given as was normally the case. But Abby Wambach had counted, the referee had listened, and the result was an indirect free kick for the United States within the confines of Canada's 18-yard box. The free kick unfolded with Tobin Heath delicately tapping the ball to Rapineau, who took a shot at the goal. Lachesis of the Greek fates intervened. The ball struck Matheson and was judged to have been handled by Nault, a Canadian defender. The consequence was a penalty kick awarded to the United States. Stepping up with unwavering determination, Wambach placed the ball on the spot. With a deep breath, she unleashed a powerful strike that eluded McLeod's grasp, nestling into the corner of the net. The score now stood at an even 3-3 three to three, as the game reached its 80th minute, the turning point that would shape the outcome of this gripping contest. As the game ventured into the realms of extra time, how would the fates intervene? Both teams continued their relentless pursuit of victory. Moments of near triumph and desperate saves unfolded in a flurry of anticipation and tension. Rapineau came agonizingly close to finding the mark in the 92nd minute. Her shot soaring just inches above the crossbar, leaving the crowd breathless with anticipation. In the 96th minute, Schmidt's well-placed free kick set the stage for Tancredi's audacious overhead kick attempt, but the strike lacked conviction, a feeble effort that was swiftly thwarted by Solo, the vigilant guardian of the American goal. The United States had their own moments, launching several valiant shot attempts and dictating the tempo of the game in the first period of extra time. However, the net remained untroubled, and the elusive goal remained out of reach. The intensity only heightened as the second period of extra time unfurled, as both teams continued to pour heart and soul into every moment on the pitch. In the 119th minute, Wambach found herself on the precipice of glory. Morgan, displaying her art history, delivered a cross with precision allowing Wambach to unleash a looping header while leaning back. Hope swelled in the hearts of the American faithful, only to be shattered as the ball kissed the crossbar and denied them the triumph they sought. With added time ticking away and a penalty shootout looming large, it seemed as if fate had decreed an unresolved conclusion. However, destiny had one final twist in store. In the 123rd minute, Heather O'Reilly, a substitute for the United States, unleashed a cross into the heart of the Canadian box. Like an arrow seeking its mark, 
Morgan rose above the chaos, redirecting the ball with a header that eluded McLeod's desperate grasp, nestling in the top right corner of the goal. The eruption of jubilation from the American side matched the despair etched on the faces of the Canadian players. With a newfound 4-3 advantage, the United States clung to their lead, defending it with unwavering determination until the final whistle, claiming a victory in a battle that will forever be etched in the annals of soccer history. The United States would go on to win the gold. Memories of the match never faint. Fates rejoicing in the drama they had created. And one day they too they would reach for gold. One Fred and Jarini then. Hey soccer friends, if you enjoy soccer bedtime stories, you might also enjoy the Soccer Time Machine podcast. It is a soccer history daily for kids, by kids. Join our young soccer fans on an epic adventure through the history of the beautiful game. From legendary players to historic moments, we'll explore it all in a fun and engaging way that's perfect for young soccer fans like you. So grab your jerseys and get ready to kick off this exciting journey with the Soccer Time Machine podcast on August 1st, wherever you listen to podcasts. Subscribe and follow to make sure you don't miss an episode. Now, off to our bedtime story, Sweet Soccer Dreams.